yeah hello everyone so good evening those of you who are not able to join today 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 session so definitely you can join you can go back and watch the videos later that i will be posting on my youtube channel so no need to worry i'll be starting now okay so okay i'll just share my screen All right. Fine. So before starting, I'll make it, I'll make some quick announcements. Before before that, let me uh, do some introductions as always. So this is uh, this course is basic electrical circuits. It's an NPTEL course, and uh, this time it is being hosted by Dr. Gajendra Nath Chaudhary. And he's from, uh, he's, uh, he, he is a faculty member in the Department of Electrical Engineering at IIT Hyderabad. And uh, myself, I am Mayan Kanupam. And uh, I am a tutor for this course. I hold these discussion sessions. So right now I'm uh, doing my PhD in electrical engineering at IIT Kanpur. Cool. So before proceeding with this week, uh, with the with with week 12's content. So I'll be making some quick announcements. So we'll be having us, uh, we'll having an extra class, extra session on uh, Thursday. That is, uh, I guess, nineteenth. We'll be having an extra session on Thursday, nineteenth. Okay. So that will be a one and a half hour or maybe one hour session. But keep your slot free for two hours. So it will be from three to five p.m. And we'll be uh, discussing some uh, last year questions and semester questions basically the exam that will be appearing in we'll be discussing those questions so please make sure that you attend that, that session next uh, basically the coming coming thursday okay on 19th 3 to 5 cool so um, yeah so let's start now let's start the session now So in this, the first question is, uh, so basically I'll be discussing uh, some questions based on the content that was covered in week 12. So we, we learned about uh, second order circuits, right? We learned about the steady state, uh, how to find out the steady state response of a second order circuit. We learned about, we saw uh, what is what is a phase at, okay? We learned about transfer function, we learned about uh, uh, frequency dependent transfer function, basically frequency response of a of, of, of a system right the second order system so we'll be using those things now uh, and, and trying to I, I will try to understand the we'll try to solve these questions here all right so the first question is in the circuit shown below what is the value of the current supplied by the voltage source okay so you see this is the uh, this is the voltage source right this is the voltage source here and this circuit is a R, there's a resistor here, there's an inductor here, there's a capacitor also here, right? It's a second order circuit, it's a complicated circuit. So definitely it's it uh, definitely what will we do? We should uh, we, we need to find out what is the current supplied by the voltage source as a function of time, right? Then in that case, there are two ways to solve this question. You can write the derivatives uh, basically differential equation of this particular circuit and then solve it, and that uh, that is also uh, a way. But uh, an easier way, and the way that we learnt in the week twelve, and that that uh, that is to convert everything in terms of phasor, to write everything in terms of phasor, and then 
try to understand what is the uh, what is the current right cool so so let's do that so you see in in terms of phaser what uh, what do we do first how do we uh, write a phaser for the, this source here then we try to replace it by its equivalent phaser what will we do sine of 10t it's a time domain uh, signal right it's a time domain voltage source the amplitude of this sine is 1 right amplitude is 1 and the this is the time dependent this is sine of omega t right sine of 1 into sine of omega t omega is 10 right and uh, correct omega is 10 and amplitude is 1 correct now when we uh, when we uh, replace in, uh, a source with its phasor representation what do we do we only retain the magnitude right we retain the magnitude 1 right the magnitude has to be retained and then there is an angle uh, associated with that magnitude right that angle is what that angle is supposed to be phi right the phase extra phase of the uh, 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 extra phase lag or lead in the uh, in the voltage source or, uh, or signal source whatever it is but, but since this phi here is zero right so that is why this angle is zero correct yes yes now i may as well write it simply one right because one angle zero is simply one right uh, you see, in general, when we try to, uh, when we do this, when we replace things with their phasor notation, when uh, we generally assume that the source is of the type cos, okay, that the source is of type 1 of cos of 10t. In, uh, basically, uh, the source has to be of the form like this, not sine, but cos, cos of some omega t plus phi, okay. We generally assume that this is the kind of source because ultimately you remember that, uh, Please recall that when we were trying to understand, when we, when we were trying to move from the time domain representation to the uh, phase representation, we were taking e to the power j of omega t, right? And we were taking the, uh, saying that the real part of that is to be taken, right? Now, real part of e to the power j omega t, you remember this? G, e to the power j omega t plus phi, this was the one that we, see, uh, that we were say, seeing and then we saw that a real part of this has to be taken right so this this uh, how will that this look real of cos of omega t plus phi plus sin of omega t plus phi right sorry Right? This is how to look. So basically, this is inside it. Okay? This is how it will look. Right? And we were only worried about the real part, isn't it? So ultimately, this uh, we, when we generally denote this uh, this voltage source or current or whatever it is, when we try to replace it into when we try to transform it or derive its uh, phasor form, we generally convert this uh, whatever it is here into cos of something. Okay, so what will this become? Cos of 10 t plus 90. Yes, this will become so sine of 10 t will be equal to cos of 90 minus 10 t, right? Okay. Sir. Or uh, in other words, it will become cos of. Uh, let's re replace everything in terms of not degree but radian. So this is pi by two, right? So this is ten t minus pi by two, isn't it? Okay, sir. Yes. So in that case, what is the phase now? So now the phase is actually this is one. Minus two. So it is one angle minus pi by two, isn't it? Yes. Right. So this is the phasor for this one so this can be replaced with let me use another color so this can be replaced with one angle minus pi by 2 minus pi by 2 cool this is done now tell me uh, since we have the value of omega here i can find the equivalent impedance right 
the phasor impedance of this uh, i mean uh, the impedance of this one henry uh, one henry inductor right i can do that so what will that be this will be j, j omega time. l right so j times 10 times 1 1 so that will be j 10 correct similarly this will be 1 over j omega c right which will become 1 over j times 10 times 0.01 right yes sir which will be how much it will be 0.1 so 10 minus 10 j right yes sir it will be minus 10 j so this is what this is a uh, minus 10 j so resistors uh, the are these also changed or this remains the same so it will be same yes it will be remain the same because there is no frequency dependence in resistors right yes sir. now now since we have everything let's make an equivalent uh, picture here so this guy here it will look like this that we have a voltage source here and we have a resistor here we have another resistor here then we have a impedance here and we have another impedance here okay this is like this so this is impedance this impedance is 5 ohms this impedance is 5 ohms this is one angle minus pi by 2 this is j times 10 this is minus j times 10 correct okay sir yes now tell me what will be the now this is very easy to solve right the circuit what will be the current now this i so this is is equal to vs so this is vs by the way vs upon so this will be parallel combination of this and this right yes so this is one and this whole guy is one so tell me what is the impedance total impedance here parallel combination of these two yes because these two cancel each other right these two cancel each other j10 and minus j10 becomes zero isn't it yes. so it is only parallel combination of 5 and 5 so this becomes 5 and 5 becomes how much 2.5 2.5 so this is 1 by 2.5 and the angle is again minus pi by 2 only isn't it so this is actually uh, how much 0. 0.4 na no? yes sir angle minus 0.4 minus pi by 2 so what will in, in if we uh, try to go so which is this is basically amperes right so if we try to uh, change back it change it back to the this thing into the time domain form what will we do we we'll simply take the magnitude here this is 0.4 cos of yes, 10t omega minus t minus pi by 2 amperes right isn't it okay sir yeah so this is an easy thing to do right okay yeah so is there any doubt in this question i guess not there should be anything this was very straight forward so we're moving on yeah so regarding this voltage source we we have to always convert it to cos yeah cost. always replace it into uh, in terms of cos then you will become it will become easy for you to handle because uh i mean if you are very well uh, very well versed with these things you will you might not be a, you might not even need sometimes but it's always a good strategy to change 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 every source in terms of cos okay and then proceed otherwise you might end up uh, in trouble that means it is beneficial but not necessary no no i mean uh, it is actually if you uh, if you actually uh, think in terms of the uh, algorithm it is always necessary okay but sometimes you might not need it if you know what you are doing this is a, this is a con- because we are uh, when we drive this uh, phasor uh, phasor it is always real off right B- when we are dri- driving it we were uh, back of our mind we are uh, we understood that we always have to take the real part of this right not the imaginary part the sign is actually the imaginary part of it and not the real part so actually you should take it but sometimes you might because in this question we might not even need it you see there is only one source here even if we uh, take in terms of sign if we had taken one angle zero ultimately there had been an angle zero here and uh, uh, and simply it would have become sin of omega t isn't it but uh, but what i am saying is it's always 
always do that always convert first into cost and then proceed further so as you move along you become if you solve a lot of questions like this you you become very comfortable with this you might not need you might uh, you might be able to uh, look at the circuit directly and say what is the what is what all right so problem number 2 this is what so this is uh, for the circuit shown in figure a the value of current i1 you see this is the circuit shown in figure a okay this is the circuit now uh, this current i1 here because of this voltage source here the i1 is how much i1 is 2 angle 45 degree okay so it is given in terms of phasor remember even the voltage source here this is in terms of phasor right the magnitude of the voltage uh, the amplitude of the voltage is 100 whereas the phase is 0 so in terms of time domain what will be the uh, voltage source here it will be 100 cos omega t correct very good and this current here will be how much so 2 cos omega t plus 45 plus 45, 45 degree. degree isn't it very good so this is uh, clear now the question that is asked is that this is the situation that you, that have been given that has been given to you okay now you do not know anything about this resistor or this capacitor the values are not given to you the only thing that you know is because of this voltage source here the current that is going to appear here will be this much okay now find the value of current i2 for the circuit shown in figure b now based on this information let me reduce the size i i hope it is visible uh, now also yes sir. yes correct so based on this information the circuit that is given on top here based on this circuit can you say what will be the current i2 here in this branch here when the voltage is 50 angle zero and this is applied at this port here can can you say something about it you do not know anything about the uh, individual components you see r1 R1, C1, R2, C2, L1, R3, L2, all these things are unknown to you. But you know that when this was excited using a voltage source which was placed in this branch here, the current which was observed in this branch here was equal to 2 angle 45. Right? Yes. So now you have to say, based on this uh, information, can you say what is the current I2 here when the voltage source is applied in this branch here? Sir, I think we have to calculate the transfer function. Is it? You, do you need to calculate? Yeah, you need to calculate the transfer function. Yes. You need to calculate what is the transfer function between this point, uh, I mean this, this, this voltage source, this voltage to this current, right? You need to have a, a, an idea of the transfer function, isn't it? So, let's say, let's say, uh, what do you want to know? I1 by V let's call it vs i1 by vs is something some random transfer function right something yes. some numerator upon some denominator i am uh, talking in terms of laplace transform do you know what is laplace transform it was not covered but okay so I, let me not go there let, let's only do in terms of j omega okay so let's say it is uh, some numerator which is a function of j omega divided by some denominator which is a function again of j omega okay and this is a transfer function i1 by vs but now and and this has been given to you i1 was given to you i1 is how much 2 angle 45 and uh, this is 100 angle 0 degree right and yes. omega actually is fixed omega is not given here isn't it you see omega is not given here omega is not given here right only the phase and this is given so there is some omega let's call it omega not here and based on that this is the information that has been given to you now based on this you have to find out a voltage you see this the location of voltage source has changed right voltage source and current is changed in the second figure yes so what do you think we should do so let me uh, draw this picture in a slightly different way and then it might it is also uh, please let me tell you that uh, the way now that I will be drawing my circuit is also a hint to solving this problem. 
you see i'll be i will i will be doing it like this let's uh, take Okay, so this is R1. This is let's. I will not replace it by one over J omega C1. Let's call it only C1 here. Okay. Then there is another capacitor C2, which is like this. Then there is R2 here. Then there is L1 here. Then there is a L2 here. okay and there is r3 here now are you getting any hint here with this uh, particular representation or okay, let me make it even easier let's not call this let's call it i2 okay okay not don't let's not do that let's call it some i uh, some i1 only so let me uh, re rename the terminals here let's call this terminal here 1 okay let's call this terminal 1 prime let's call this terminal 2 and 2 prime and now this uh, voltage here is v1 okay and uh, this current is some i2 okay so see i i simply uh, have re has I have renamed this i1 is equal to i2 it is this i2 is not same as this i2 okay please do not think about uh, this figure for a moment only think about the upper one please do not think about the lower figure for a moment Okay, only thing about the upper figure. I have simply redrawn the upper figure in this manner. Do you get any hint with this representation, with this way of redrawing the circuit? It is similar to the two-port network questions. Yes. So, what do you think uh, you should do? Okay. What about the circuit? I mean, what comments can you make about the circuit? Is this a linear network or a non-linear network? Which is uh, whatever. a uh, circuit is there inside this red dotted box is the circuit linear or non linear yes sir it is linear sir it is linear right yes so tell me can you use uh, any theorems for your benefit here any theorem for your benefit which will help you in establishing a relationship okay so by the way tell me something what is the relation between uh, these two figures so you see you want to find out now the so in in between these two figures what is different let me copy and then so in between these two figures now what do you want to do do this you want to find out what is the current i1 here right and you want have applied a voltage source here which is 50 angle 0 right this 100 angle 0 this 100 angle 0 you have applied a voltage which is 50 angle 0 here right so tell me something what do you think we should do Sir, I think reciprocity theorem. Yes, very good. So this is what we need to use reciprocity theorem here because you see the circuit inside this inside this dotted red dotted box here is linear. Okay, circuit inside this box is linear. 
okay and in the first instance in the first case we have applied a voltage source at this port here and observed a short circuit current at this port here at port 2 right now yes. in the second case i simply reversed the case i reversed it i have now applied a voltage source at the second terminal at the second port and i'm trying to observe what is the volt, uh, what is the short circuit current at the first port isn't it so the relationship i know isn't it i know the relationship this is since this is a uh, since this is a reciprocal network we know that uh, i1 the short circuit current due to a voltage uh, due to a the short circuit current observed at port 2 because of the uh, applied voltage at port 1 is what y what is that tell me in terms of y parameters what is it what is i2 by v1 is same y2 as y21 y21 isn't it it is y21 right yes yes and it is also y21 is how much it is two angle uh, 45 right divided by 100 angle zero this is y21 okay and and we know that y21 is also equal to y12 right Yes. For so okay, yeah. to do this, y two one is actually equal to y one two for reciprocal networks. Networks, and we know that any linear network, is, any linear time invariant network is also reciprocal, right? Okay. Isn't it? So that is why. So that is why uh, not any linear, uh, yeah. So basically, any uh, any network which consists only of resistors, inductors, and capacitors is also always a reciprocal network. So that is why in this case, what is y one to tell me? What is y one to y one to is indeed equal to what in this I figure? One by v2. I one by v two, right? V2. Which is equal to how much? I one we want to calculate, and uh, v two we know, right? So this is this has to be equal to. Two angle forty five degree divided by hundred angle zero degree, and uh, what is I one in that case? Two angle forty five divided by hundred angle zero degree multiplied by fifty angle zero degree. Right? This is fifty, isn't it? So now this is equal to how much? One angle forty five degree. Right. So, what will be the current here? It will be one cos so of omega t omega plus plus 45. 45 degree, and this much amperes. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes. Cool. So, I hope you understood this question. So, this was a good question to revise uh, two concepts, basically phases and. Uh, and and reciprocity moving on okay find the phasor diagram for the circuit shown below so we need to find out what is the phasor diagram for the circuit so tell me what will be the phasor diagram so how do you uh, draw the phasor diagram you assume that voltage source here since nothing is given you assume that the voltage source here is at angle 0 degree okay Yes, sir. Well, there will be some magnitude. Transmitter. Yeah, come again. Sir, voltage source will be assumed to be the reference phase, sir. Yes, yes. You assume that the voltage source is at reference phase. Basically, reference phase phase is the same as zero zero degree, right? So yes. you assume that the magnitude of the voltage source is mod of Vs, and then angle is zero degree. Based on that, now you have to find out what will be the different phases for Vr, Vl, and Vc. So tell me how will you do that? So tell me what is VR? So VR will be in phase with uh, uh, VS. How? Yes. Why? Why should it be? Why should VR be in phase with VS? Sure. The voltage across the resistor is in phase with the current across uh, current through the resistor. Okay. 
Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, the current through the resistor will always be in phase with the voltage through the voltage across the resistor. That is definitely uh, sure. So tell me what is VR? So for anything, we first need to find out what is the current, right? What is yes. the current? What is the current here, which is IS? Yes. For calculating current, we will need impedance. Yeah, impedance is given, right? Of all the quantities, all the elements, the impedance is given. So what is IS? It's PS upon Z. So it's a series combination, right? Yes. Sir. So it is 200 plus, plus J1250 minus J450, right? Yes. Sir. Which then becomes Vs divided by 200 plus J800. Correct. So what this will be? This will be mod of Vs angle 0 degree divided by 200 into 1 plus J4, right? Yes. So what will be the angle of this guy? Mod of Vs divided by 200. So this is... 25.96. 0 degree divided by what is the magnitude of this 16 plus 1 17 root over 17 right and the angle will be how much angle will be 75.96 yeah that is uh, but let's do it in terms of this tan inverse of 4 by 1 tan inverse of 4 right so if you uh, find out the uh, the current would be how much so this will be mod of Vs divided by 200 which will be the magnitude, okay, 200 root 70, this will be magnitude and the angle would be minus of tan inverse 4, right? Okay, sir. Isn't it? Yes, sir, yes. Correct. So the current is what? Current is supposed to be below the uh, phase, right? Below the, uh, below the reference phase. Current is at negative phase. You see minus of tan inverse 4. This, have, this will have negative phase, isn't it? So tell me, yes. if the current has a negative phase, what will the voltage VR, uh, what will the uh, voltage VR phase will be? It will also it will be negative, be. right? Yes. Sir. Right? So if we have a, so now, to let's start doing it. So if we have a IS, VS like this, so I, a VR should be below, right? Yes. It should be below, like this, somewhere. It should be, VR should be here, right? Yes. Now, uh, now let's uh, find what is VL. What is VL? VL is what? The current through the inductor, sorry, uh, vo voltage across the inductor, right? We know that the voltage across the inductor is always 90 degree ahead uh, of leading. leading the current, right? Yes, sir. Now, the current is also in the same uh, same as VR, right? The current would be somewhere here. I mean, like this. Yes, sir. Let's call this some IS. This is IS, okay? Yes, sir. So, this is IS. Then, in that case, 90 degree uh, ahead of this would be the inductor current right inductor yes. voltage so it should be somewhere like this or oh, somewhere like this right and this would be 90 degree ahead so this will be vl correct yes and we know that the uh, voltage across the capacitor is 90 degree lagging the current lagging uh, 90, is at a 90 degree lag compared to current right so it should be where sir in the third quadrant like this right Yes. It, it is VC. So, which one is the correct out of all the four? A. Yes. A is correct. Right? Yes. Mm. So, now you understand how to find out the phases, uh, phasor diagram. So, this was also taught to you maybe in uh, a standard 12th, right? Standard 12th, there is a, uh, there is a course AC circuits, AC something is there, right? In that, this is there. Phaser thing is there. But at uh, that time, we didn't learn it very well. But uh, now it is our bread and butter. So, phaser thing, please be very comfortable with it. I have some more questions on that.
to make you comfortable this is very important phaser all right hmm again the same kind of question phaser diagram one second in the circuit shown below v1 is this much v2 is this much so basically in this circuit we have v1 equal to sin t volt v2 is equal to 2 sin t plus 60 degree volt then the phasor diagram for the circuit shown below will be yes tell me how will the phasor diagram look like first of all tell me what will be the position of v1 and v2 we have to keep v1 in the horizontal position along the a axis yes let's do that let's and do then... that this is v1 okay and then v2 will be 60 degree above right yes sir this is angle is 60 degree this is v2 right the magnitude yes. is also two times uh, for v2 right so v2 will be larger compared yes. to v1 right so yes. let's do this Is that it? This would be something like this, okay? Okay. And now, tell me what will be the voltage across the? Um, so what do what, what do they want to find us? What do they want us to find? So they want us to find the voltage across the capacitor, okay? So tell me. Uh, Sir, first we have to uh, first find the net voltage. Yes. Right. Yes. Tell me. Right. Triangle of addition or uh, parallelogram, whichever. Yeah. So tell me what will that be? How will you do? So basically, you know that in terms of phasor, you can simply add it, right? You can simply so let's so if there is a phasor, you simply do this. Yeah, you are correct. You have to do uh, whatever you are saying, but. Uh, So yeah, so what what will that be? V1 minus so what will be the current by the way in this branch? V1 minus V2 divided by one plus whatever the impedance of this. So tell me what will be the impedance of this 0.5 guy, 0.5 farad guy? This will be. Sir, what by J omega 0.5? One by J times 0.5, okay. and omega is one, right? Okay. So no worries there. So okay, this will sir. be two minus two J, right? Okay. Sir. This is minus two J. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do we want to do? Want to find out V one minus V two upon one minus two J, right? That will be the current. Okay. And okay. then, what will be the voltage across the capacitor? So, this multiplied by the cap capacitive capacitive impedance. Like this, right? Yes, sir. Isn't it? So yes. we first have to find out what is V one minus V two. Hmm? So what is V one minus V two? V one minus V two. So okay, sir. Polar form me dalna pade. Yes. So it will be like this, somewhere here, right? No, don't don't solve it. I'm just trying to. You can always find uh, find the numerical answer. That's okay. I. Just want to find out the, uh, just want to motivate the uh, methods. Okay, so minus V two will be somewhere here. So this will be somewhere here, right? Minus V two. So, okay, let me. Yeah, this is minus V two, right? And then triangle of uh, addition would be can be applied, right? So this will be somewhere like here, equivalent V one minus V two, right? Okay, sir. Correct. And now, what is uh, now? You have to what? What do you need to do for V C? First, you need to find out the current, right? What is the current? One minus two j is how much? This will be minus two upon one. So uh, the angle of this I am trying to find out. What is the angle of this? 
this is the tan inverse minus tan inverse of minus 2 right the angle of 1 over 1 minus 2 j isn't it so what is the angle of 1 minus 2 j this this guy this is minus tan inverse of minus 2 right yes yeah so that is how much tan inverse of 2 isn't it yes. so uh, this will be basically moving in counterclockwise direction by so this is how much tan inverse 2 and this tan inverse 2 will be adding to the angle of v1 minus v2 right isn't it sir it is a minus sign minus sir no so you see okay 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 let me rewrite it so that it uh, easily is able to be v1 minus v2 has some angle here right so by the way tell okay tell me exactly what will be this angle this is easy to do this magnitude is 2 this magnitude is 1 okay and then the this angle is how much this angle is 120 degree so tell me where where is how much is this angle i mean this is, is this 90 degree or some angle some other angle come on come on this is very easy so this is one this is two okay this is 120 degrees this is the diagonal so how much is this angle here sir 60 degree is it? Sir, I am not getting, getting any idea to calculate that numerical value, sir. Okay, I am asking how much is this angle, this angle here? How much is this angle? The whole angle is 120 degree. This whole angle is 120 degree, right? This whole angle is 120 degree, yes. And this is the diagonal. Hmm, this is a parallelogram. This whole guy is a parallelogram. So these two guys are congruent to each other, isn't it? Okay, sir. I mean, this angle, this is equal to this, this is equal to this, and this is a common guy. So the two sides are congruent to each other, isn't it? So tell me what will be the situation. So this angle should be equal to this angle. Hmm? What was it, sir? I am saying this two, hmm, these two triangles are yes, congruent, sir. right? Okay, sir. So I am saying these two angles are equal. Okay, sir. Hmm? Now this angle here is equal to which angle? Tell me. So the angle between the resultant and minus V2. Between the resultant and minus V2. Yes. This angle is equivalent to this angle, right? Yes, sir. And this angle here is equal to this angle. Yes, sir. Correct? Right? So tell yes, me what will be the uh, so this angle is completely equal. Okay, so let's forget about this. Become let's let's leave it like this. But anyway, this is uh, some angle. Okay, you can easily calculate it. It's not a big deal. I will not I will not go there. This will simply take up time. So, but this angle will be some. So sorry, sorry, sorry. This angle will be some angle, right? Some angle. Take, take. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm saying is this is some negative degree angle. Okay. And then 1 over 1 minus 2j is tan inverse of 2, right? Okay, sir. The angle of this angle of this is equal to tan inverse of 2, correct? Okay, sir. Because it is minus of tan inverse of minus 2. That is why it is tan inverse of 2. Okay, okay sir. And this tan inverse of 2 will add in angle, right? Uh, with v1 minus v2 angle, right? What will the overall angle of this? If you uh, ignore this minus 2j here, 
So what will be the overall angle of this? This will be angle of V1 minus V2 minus angle of 1 exactly. minus 2J. Sorry, 1 over 1 minus 2J, right? Yes, sir. And what is, uh, what is uh, angle of 1 minus 2J is? Tan inverse 2. Right? Sorry, plus. And what is the, this is tan inverse of 2, right? Yes, sir. So that is why I am saying it will add. Right? So tan inverse of 2 will add with this quantity, right? Okay, sir. So now tell me if it adds here. So uh, where will that guy move? Where will the new phaser move? So this was Sorry. original one. It will move. It will move counterclockwise, right? Yes. Sir. Now, uh, where will it move? It will move somewhere here or here, based upon the bank, uh, based upon this angle, right? Yes. Sir. So I will not worry about it. But let's say it it has moved here somewhere. Okay. Now I have to multiply. Remember, I I had to multiply with another minus two j here. To find out the, uh, uh, this thing, to find out voltage the voltage across the capacitor, right? So tell me, if you multiply by one other minus 2j, what will that happen? What will that do? It will simply take voltage it back 90. 90 degree, right? In the, in this, in the direction that I showed. So in this direction, right? Yes, sir. So it will move somewhere here, correct? Okay, sir. So tell me, where will the, so what is the final verdict in that case? Where is VC? Sir, in that case, sir, either option A or option B is correct, sir. Correct. Either option A or option B is correct. And that you can uh, uh, simply find out by simply putting the numbers. What is the exact angle? Okay. okay but sir. you understand the idea here, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, if you put the numbers, you will get the exact angle where it will be. Yes. yes. So I guess that is okay, right? The idea here was to motivate, I mean, uh, make you understand the way the uh, you have, they have to deal with phases, okay, the angles, how, how things rotate. So phases are very easy. Uh, phases can phases actually uh, are visualize. You can visualize phases as simply vectors, okay, which will be rotating in some with the with the angular 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 velocity of omega because that's uh, that's how you have to assume uh, understand uh, the spacers okay so another question here for the circuit shown uh, in the figure the thevenin voltage vth and the impedance zth across the terminal a and b is yes you have to find out thevenin's uh, this thing thevenin's impedance here what will you do? How do you find Thevenin's impedance and Thevenin's uh, voltage? Open circuit in the, all the current sources. Okay, oh, hold on. I will just turn on the lights. Yeah. You first? Uh, for ZTH, what do you do? Open circuit all the current sources, short circuit all the voltage sources, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, first find out what is ZTH. So, what is ZTH? For ZTH, yeah, I will just write it here. ZTH, open circuit all the voltage sorry current sources independent current sources okay, okay short circuit all the independent voltage sources and then find the then apply a test voltage, right? Apply a test voltage source uh, 
find the current through the voltage source take the ratio isn't it that is what we do for zth so tell me what we do again we will simply apply a voltage source here like this this is some vs okay and we have to find out what is this is we have to open circuit these two so these two are current sources by the way okay yes. so these two are current sources this is open circuit this is open circuit tell me what is the equivalent impedance here so all the three guys are in yeah all the three guys are in series right series. so what is that th 20 plus j40 plus j20 which is j60 ohms okay okay so and what is vth what do you do for uh, vth Sir, open circuit the terminals right yes sir and find the voltage across the terminals correct so since you have two current sources here two sources here you have to do it for this so you have open circuited it now you have to find out what is the voltage source voltage voltage like this in this manner right yes, so this is bth so what is bth tell me so you can use superposition around. here you can use superposition here right okay but that is not required here simply because you see the since this is open circuited here there can be no current flowing in this branch right so there is no information in this branch so the current that is being flowing here so it will simply uh, circulate here the current here yes. will simply circulate here right so you can yes. simply find out the voltage at this point due to this current source at this point due to this current source here and then simply yes. take the difference right yes sir. yeah so what is the voltage at this point this is equal to three angle 90 three. into j40 right yes sir so what is that 3 into 40 is 120 right and then angle 90 and the angle uh, contributed because of this j40 would be another yeah. 90 right yes sir. so it will be 180 correct okay sir. yeah so this is basically the voltage here let's call it some v v1 okay the v1 would be 3 angle 90 multiplied by j40 so 3 angle 90 so simply multiply how do you multiply two polars so first convert this j40 in terms of again angle so this is 390 and this is what 40, 49 40 90 right so how do you multiply two polars? You simply take the magnitude of the pro sorry product of the magnitudes, which is one twenty sum, sum of the angles, right? Yes. Sir. So this is what I have done here. All right. What is the voltage here? V two. Forty angle. One twenty. One eighty. Right okay sir. again the same thing now what is vth v1 minus v2 v1 minus v2 which is equal to 80 angle 180 right okay sir. and what is angle 180 equal to angle minus right minus 8 it is uh, what is angle 180 it is simply minus sign right it is simply inverted isn't okay. it one angle 180 is what minus 1 so 80 angle 180 is minus 80 right minus 80 volt 
so it is the uh, correct answer would be this one right this is the correct answer okay sir no no sorry 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 this is not the correct answer the third one is the correct answer yeah is that ts is 20 plus j60 yeah. third one is the correct answer cool yes sir yeah so moving on quickly yes now consider a circuit shown in the figure with a load impedance zl hmm what is uh, what value zl will absorb maximum power maximum average power so what do you do for this kind of question remember what do you do for average power uh, maximizing average power earlier so that maximum power transfer theorem yes so what do you do for maximum power transfer theorem you have to do conjugate matching right okay, basically matching right so uh, there there it was simply matching if the load resistance becomes rl becomes equal to rs in that situation you have maximum power transfer right yes here what do you do here you make sure that the load impedance is in uh, conjugate. Uh, conjugate of the source impedance isn't it correct so let's do that so how do you find out the source impedance first you have to make sure that the average, average uh, power is average power uh, supplied to the zl is maximized right so what will be the so what do you do first you have to make the thevenin's equivalent right of this particular network here so yes find out the thevenin's equivalent here what will it be what will be zth sir we have to apply here test voltage yes to... you have to apply test voltage by shorting this first right this will be shorted here and then you have to apply test voltage so apply test voltage and then say how much is this so this is the same thing like this right so let me redraw it it is one ohm is here and then there is j1 ohm here this is j times 1 here plus minus vx minus j1 here right two x here mm. apply test voltage here hmm v test what is the current i test here yes what is the current i test here sir i have not calculated it yet sir okay let's do that so i test should be equal to how much this current 2 vx plus uh sorry or minus 2 vx rather plus since this current is going this way so it will be minus 2 vx right plus whatever current is going here isn't it so how much current will be going here so we test divided by z equivalent correct so we test divided by z equivalent so what is z equivalent here this would be these two guys in parallel right j1 and j1 uh, and 1 in parallel which will be j1 times 1 divided by 1 plus j right so it will be 1j divided by j plus 1 this will be this parallel impedance plus, plus 1 over 1 over minus j right sir 
it is already converted in the complex form sir no and then it will be inverse of this v test right am i correct sir here sir 1 by minus uh, j sir okay yeah this is one. sir what is the problem with that sir, oh sir. Yes, yes yes sorry 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 yes thank you thank you it will be simply minus j here right right thank you thank you is it now correct is it correct now yes sir right yes yes so it is minus 2 vx plus and this will be how much so 1j minus j and plus minus j is again one right one plus j inverse of this times v test and uh, is i test so what is this minus 2vx plus it is 1 plus j divided by then this cancel so it will 1 times v test right now we have to find out what is vx what is vx in terms of v test what is this voltage in terms of vf uh, v test it is the voltage so division should... right yeah tell me what we should do so, sir which voltage are you referring to sir i am asking about this voltage vx because this current this current here is dependent upon vx right yes, a, voltage dependent current source here so we have to find out what is vx in terms of v test right so what is vx in terms of v test you see it's a simple voltage division right the voltage here is v test so it's a simple voltage division so tell me what is that parallel combination of this and there is this uh, this thing here right so what is that or other words you can simply find out the since we have already have the current flowing through this right the current we already have 1 plus j right. times v test okay. right and that simply multiplied by the uh, parallel impedance of this will give us vx right so it will be 1 plus j times v test which is the current this current here correct and this multiplied by the impedance 1 uh, 1 j divided by 1 plus j right that will give us the vx so this is this is gone so it is simply equal to v test times 1j right yes. this is vx so replacing that here if we replace that here so it will become minus 2 times we replace this value here correct it will become minus 2 times 1j times v test here plus 1 plus j times another v test here and that is i test correct so tell me what is v test upon i test now 1 over 1 plus j minus 2j right which is 1 over 1 minus 2j correct okay sir. so this is our zth isn't it yes Mm. Okay, so how much is this? Can you replace it like this? So it will be 1 plus 2j divided by 1 plus 4, right? Or another one is 5. That is 1 plus 2j by 5. This is ZTH. So 0.2 plus 0.4j. Yes, yes. Now, now what do we need to find out? What is VTH, right? We also need to find out VTH. Yes. So what is VTH? How will you do that? Simply open it here. You open it here, and then you find out what is VTH, right? So again, tell me what is VTH. VTH is.
Hmm. How much it will be? Yes, solve it quickly. Did you solve it? Did you solve it? No, sir. Solve it? So, first we have to apply KCL at this node above that inductor. This node? Yes, to do that. Okay, so, so before that, should we do something else to make it uh, uh, slightly easier? You see, let's use some source transformation here, okay? So this can be equivalently mentioned, right, written in terms of like this, right? If this is uh, replaced by a current source, this voltage source, and the, the current source value will be 4, angle 0 degree, right? Yes. And this resistor will be again resistor like this, 1 ohms then this will be a parallel combination of this one also right and this will be j times 1 ohms plus minus vx right this is the current minus j1 and this is the situation like this here 2vx you want to find out this voltage vth right See this uh, whole thing, it becomes equal to how much? A simple 1 plus j, right? 1 plus j, isn't it? Oh, sorry, this is a parallel combination of two, uh, two uh, resistors, right? The impedance equivalent impedance becomes 1j divided by 1 plus j, right? You already saw it. Yes, sir. Correct? And this multiplied by this uh, 4 ohm. Uh, 4 ohm. Okay, okay, so sorry this is 4 amperes right 4 amperes and this is the situation now we will again do source transformation here right the equivalent impedance of this would uh, this was how much 1j by 1 plus 1j correct this was 1j divided by 1 plus j right yes sir. so again we will do source transformation now we will do this again it will come uh, come back as a this thing Oh, no, 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 but if you do source transformation now, this will be a problem because we have a uh, dependent source, so we cannot do source transformation anymore. Okay, so you'll have to live with this, you cannot do source transformation anymore, so it will be like this. So we cannot do any source transformation because why tell me? You so see, I if we because uh, because you see the this voltage here, this voltage here, this is V X is actually uh, needed, right? Here also, if we do source transformation here, this voltage will be lost, right? Yes. This voltage V X will be lost, so we cannot transform it anymore. We will have to go with this only. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. So now we'll do uh, KCL. All right. So tell me, KCL are different nodes. Hmm. So let's write KCL at this node. Okay. So what is the KCL at this node? Let's call it V1. Let's call it V2. By the way, V2 is equal to VTS, right? So, we will not call it V2, we will call it VTH. So, let us uh, write KCL at V1. KCL at V1. What is that? 4 angle 0 plus 4 angle VX. 0 plus 2VX. 2VX. Is it? Yes, sir. This is a de uh, dependent current source. Sir. Yes. Plus 2VX. Yes, is equal and, to and what is Vx by the way? Vx is equal to V1, so let's call it Vx only. Okay, 
<laughs> at vx 2vx is equal to what is equal to sir v, vx by j by 1 plus j right okay sir yeah and this is kcl at this node right so we will directly find out what is vx right with this what is vx पोलर और ये कन्वर्ट करना पड़ेगा या या नो नो फोर एंगल जीरो इज नथिंग फोर एंगल जीरो सिंपली फोर ओके फोर प्लस जे जीरो या सो इट इज फोर सो नथिंग टू कन्वर्ट हियर सो इट सिंपली हाउ मच फोर जे प्लस ओके सो लेट्स डू दिस फोर प्लस फोर इक्वल टू वी एक्स One plus j divided by j minus two, right? So what is v x now? One minus j divided by j, so it's four j divided by one minus j, right? Okay, sir. Ah, huh. this is this much. This is v x. So what is v t h? What is VTH? This is VX plus this capacitor is how much? Minus J one, right? So the current is moving in this way. So the drop across this uh, capacitor will be added, right? So it will be VX plus drop across this capacitor. Dro drop across this capacitor, right? Okay. That will be how much? Minus J one times. 2vx, 2vx, right? So what is vx? 4j divided by 1 minus j, isn't it? Okay, sir. So how much is that? Oh, I shouldn't have converted it like this. 2vx only. Yeah. So now take vx common. So what is this? 1 minus 2j. 1 minus 2j. So what is vth? Is equal to 4j divided by 1 minus j into 1 minus 2j. Correct. What is that? 4j into 1 minus 2j into 1 plus j divided by 2. Isn't it? So from 2, and what is this? 2j into 1 minus 2j plus into 1 plus j is 1, and uh, then. Plus two, right? And then minus two j plus j is minus j. This is equal to two j into three plus three minus j. Isn't it? So now we have VTH and we have ZTH. So what is our VTH? Final VTH is equal to two j into three minus j. What is our ZTH? One plus two g by five, right? Okay. So, what will be the value of Z L for maximum power transfer here? Z L, sir, conjugate of that. Yes. One. Correct. It should be one minus two g divided by five. Right. Yes. So is that clear now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So if we probably didn't have to find out what is the value of V, VTH. By the way, now that we have the value of VTH, can you tell me what is the maximum power transferred? What is P max? What is P average max? So v square by z l. No, it is mod of v square. It is mod of v square by z l, right? And that too, yes. maximum power is how much? Four, right? Okay, sir. 
How much is that? Four or two? Tell me, come on, fast. Sir, I don't remember that. I think I have to look up in the books. Okay, so let's derive it. So what is P average? P average is how much? V square upon what of V square upon two Z L, right? So if you have a okay. if you have voltage source here, if you have one uh, Z L here and another Z L conjugate here. So what is the total? Uh, what is the total current here? This is V S. Okay. So this is V S divided by Z L plus Z L conjugate. This is the total current that you have, right? Yes, sir. Yes. This is I. So what is the uh, power? Power is real of V times I conjugate, right? Okay, sir. This is real of what is V? Across this, this is V S into Z L upon Z L plus Z L conjugate, right? And into I conjugate. What is I conjugate? V S conjugate divided by Z L plus Z S. Sorry, Z L conjugate conjugate, right? So by the way, there is a half here. There is a half factor involved here. Okay. So it is half of this. Yeah, so tell me how much is this now? V S into V S conjugate becomes mod of V S square, right? Multiplied by Z L divided by. Oh sorry, this is Z L conjugate by the way. This is Z L conjugate divided by. Z L plus Z L conjugate square. So this is and this is conjugate of this, right? This again becomes Z L plus Z L conjugate. The mod no. of that whole square, right? Okay, yeah. So how much is that? Since Z L and Z L conjugate are uh, uh, basically. What will this become? Same magnitude. They have same magnitude. Yeah, they have same magnitude. So basically, this will become a real part of Z L, right? Yeah. Come on, come on. Tell me what will be the what will be the value here? So, so since V S square is anyway real now, we can uh, as well take it out of the real guy here. Becomes uh, Z L conjugate divided by Z L plus Z L conjugate the whole square. How much will this be? Sir, solve कर दीजिए सर आप समझ में नहीं आ रहा हूँ. Okay. Complex number में बहुत दिक्कत है सर. Okay, okay, okay. So this is how much? This is uh, let's write it here again. I I is equal to yeah sorry power is equal to now. This is the delivered power delivered average power by the way. This is average power and since I have already assumed conjugate matching matching it is also max. Okay so what what is this? Is equal to half of mod of V S square into real of Z L conjugate divided by Z L plus Z L conjugate mod square, right? Now, since Z L plus Z L conjugate is always always a real number, it is right. It is real number, right? Z L plus Z L conjugate is always a real number. Yes, sir. The imaginary part can sell out. Yes, correct. So. Uh, So you can always, uh, you can as well take it out, take it out, take it out, right?
correct is it right is it correct is it correct yes sir yes sir yeah so what i want you to do is i want you to uh, use this formula here and find out what is the uh, maximum average power that is being delivered here okay go back and uh, and try to find out how much is the maximum average power since we have everything here right now since we have v vs is what vth right vs is vth so you have all those things based on that you can go and <coughs> and find out what is the uh, maximum average power that is being delivered here okay okay sir mm. Yeah, it's the same question. Okay, it's the same question. Uh, but in this question, we have asked, what is the value of maximum average power absorbed by the load? It's the same thing. Okay, the same question as last, last one. Okay. I will not solve this. You can solve this on your own. Ah. Okay. What is the magnitude and phase plot of the voltage across the inductor in the, uh, in the circuit shown below? Yeah, so how will you do that? So they have been asking what is the voltage and the what is the what is the magnitude and the phase plot of the voltage across the inductor. So tell me what is the voltage across the inductor? This what is the formula? What will it look like? V is equal to L D I V T T. Ah, in terms of phases. Since you want to find out the frequency response, right? You want to find out what is the magnitude as a function of frequency. You can you have to go into phases, right? Okay, sir. V is equal to I into J omega L. Correct. I into J omega L. What is I? I is V is divided by R one plus J omega L plus one over J omega C, and into J omega L, right? This yes, is the V L, right? Yes, sir. So, what is this? Uh, what is the main phase of this VL? Phase is this guy is ninety degree, right? Okay, sir. Numerator is ninety degree, right? Yes, sir. So, phase is uh, numerator minus denominator, right? So, phase is angle of numerator minus angle of denominator. So, what is the angle of numerator? It is ninety degree always. So, this is J omega, right? Yes, sir. And then minus of angle of denominator, which is Tan inverse of tan inverse of omega l plus one by omega c by r. Omega l minus na? It is not minus omega c, right? One over omega c. Since j, this is one over j, right? So if you do this, it becomes minus j. Minus j, right? Yes. Minus j over omega c. Hmm. And divided by R one, right? right? Yes. Yeah. So this is the phase, right? And what is the magnitude? In the top, it is V S into omega L, right? Divided by R one square plus omega L minus. One by omega c square under root whole under root. Correct. Something of this kind, right? Okay, sir. So how will this look like? So at a very low frequencies, when omega is very very low, what is this? You can uh, you can neglect this quantity, right? Omega is omega is very low. Then one over omega c will be very large, right? Yes, sir. So in that point, in that case, omega l can be neglected in respect with respect to omega c, right? Okay, sir. And so equivalent at very low frequencies, 
at omega is much much less than uh, i mean omega is very close to 0 at that time this will become how much vs into omega l divided by root over r square plus 1 over omega c the whole square this will be like this right okay sir and if omega is very low then it might be much greater than r square also right 1 over omega c square because omega is very low so you can neglect this also so this will become ultimately equal to omega square lc right yes so at very low frequency yeah at very low frequency what should you observe omega square so i mean it should increase like right it should increase right at very low frequencies the magnitude should be very low right it should be at as omega is reducing it should reduce so as omega is increasing it should go like this right since omega is yes, uh, since this is directly proportional right i mean this is omega square here there is omega square term here right okay sir so it should keep on going like this so at very low frequency it should increase so it should be either this one or this one right at very low frequency it should keep on increasing right at very low frequency yes. it should increase the magnitude at least okay yes yes sir. at very high frequencies what should happen very high frequencies you please understand that at very high frequencies what will happen this omega, omega c one over omega c will be very less right omega yes. l will dominate so yes. it would be how much it would be vs mod of vs at omega tending to infinity it should be how much mod of vs into omega l magnitude or only omega l only divided by root over r square plus omega l the whole square right now uh, at very high frequency r square will also be very less than omega l right so that okay. mod of vs into omega l divided by this will be r can be neglected so it will be omega l square under root which will be simply omega l only so they simply cancel each other right okay so at very high frequencies v l will be equal to v s right so okay. it should be a constant at high frequencies so it should be constant again at high frequencies is that it okay the magnitude at uh, very low and now at intermediate frequencies what should happen at intermediate frequency by that what i mean at at the resonant frequency where omega l is equal to 1 over omega c at that time this quantity here will go to zero right okay sir and then this guy here uh, omega uh, vl will become larger right larger compared to vs it might become larger compared to vs so this is a possible magnitude transfer function here okay this is a possible magnitude of vl okay okay sir but now we also have to find out which phase what will the phase characteristic of this uh, of this uh, uh, VL. So, what is the phase here? 90 minus 10 inverse 1 uh, omega L minus 1 over omega C by, by R1, right? Yes. So, what is that? At very low frequency, when omega is very less, or, uh, when omega is actually equal to 0, okay? At very low frequency, when omega is equal, actually equal to 0, what will be the uh, this thing? What will be the angle here? This, what will be the angle here? 1 by 0 is infinity, right? Yes, sir. So one by mi minus one by infinity. Sorry, minus one by zero is minus infinity, right? Okay. So this is minus one by zero. So it is minus infinity, right? This will go to minus infinity. Okay, sir. Correct. So what is tan inverse of minus infinity? It is minus ninety degrees, isn't it? Okay, sir. So you see tan tan theta. You remember? is minus pi by 2 this plus pi by 2 here it goes like this yes yes sir. correct so yes. if at minus infinity the angle of tan theta is minus pi by 2 right yes so it should be minus pi by 2 here or minus 90 so how much will this become 90 minus minus 90 it will be 180 right okay sir so it should start with 180 here correct okay sir and at very high frequencies when omega is very large at that time this quantity will be much larger right yes sir so it will be infinity tan inverse of infinity what is that pi by 2 correct 90 minus 90 right which is equal to 
zero. So it should be going to zero asymptotically, right? Yes. So again, this is the correct. So this is the correct uh, response. Okay. Yeah. Similarly, questions. These these two questions are again similar. Oh. Okay. Okay. Same question. I have taken two times. Again, the same. This question is also similar. You can uh, work through it in your own time. So this is pretty much what I want to discuss today. There will be an extra class on on Thursday. Please attend. There I will be discussing some of the questions from pre previous year. Okay, that will be for your benefit if you want to uh, appear in the examination conducted for this sure, sir, particular sure. course. Yeah. Sure, we will attend. Yeah, yeah, yes. On Thursday we will be having an extra class. It will be. Uh, it is officially for two hours, but I will try to wrap it up in. One hour, one hour, fifteen minutes. Okay, so please, please do attend that uh, session. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for today. I'll also thank cover you, some. I'll also uh, do some revision of the earlier things which we have already studied. I have not posted the lecture for week ten again because I thought since we are anyway having an extra class on ten on uh, Thursday, I will be covering that on Thursday itself. Okay. You can come with your doubts on that day if you have any doubt in the overall course. We'll be trying to address. I'll be I'll be addressing those questions. Okay. Okay. So, that's that's all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for joining today.